Hi, it's Charlie Zeese with Stargate Pyramids and the Pyramid Science Foundation. Today, I'm really happy to announce that uh, the book that I've been working on for probably two and a half years is finally available on Amazon for purchase. Uh, the title of the book is 76.345, Exploring the Hidden Secrets of the Golden Ratio. Uh, I wanted to tell you a little bit about it. For those of you who you know, follow us, you've been aware that I've been working on this for some time, but uh, wanted to do uh, a general uh, summary of the book so you can know what it's about. Uh, this is the, the uh, cover page of the book. And uh, on the cover page is an ancient ruin called the uh, uh, Great Zimbabwe Ruin, which is uh, one of many uh, ancient conical structures, uh, which we have found that have this geometry. Um, here's a picture. Uh, uh, this actually became available for search and so forth on Tuesday uh, of this week. Uh, but it was available for the first time on Monday the 16th. But anyway, uh, this shows you what to look for. Uh, if you can now search this inside the Amazon search bar. So just type in 76.345 and you should um, get there very easily. So just wanted to go over uh, for those of you uh, who are new to this, some of the key concepts uh, about 76.345. 76.345 is the geometry of three-dimensional phi scaling. I found out about this because of my original research into the Russian pyramids, and I, and I determined it uh, through a, a, a fairly lengthy process, which, which I go into in the book. But essentially, by taking circles in two dimensions or in three dimensions, spheres, uh, and stacking them on top of each other, uh, each of these circles or spheres, their diameters are going to decrease by phi or 1.618, and so forth. Uh, and once you've done that, you build a pyramid around it and it ends up with this uh, very distinct 76.345 degree slant angle. And that's, that's essentially the way I came up with this. And what's happened to the book, uh, originally I was gonna write this purely about the Russian pyramids, but I found this everywhere in nature, in technology, and in our ancient uh, architecture. So I really made the book about the geometry rather than the pyramid. But uh, we'll go through uh, you know, the major areas in the book, and you'll see why it all fits together so neatly. Uh, another thing that, that I've done in the past, which is in the book as well, is to show that the Giza pyramid and the uh, Russian pyramids, or the 76345 angle, which is really what the book's about, are shared by both the Russian and the uh, Giza pyramids. So you'll see that the Russian pyramid uh, has the 76,345 as its slant angle, whereas the Giza pyramid has 76,345 as its apex angle. And we go into that in a lot of detail. A couple of processes as well, quickly, that just demonstrate uh, how significant this geometry is. Light actually refracts at this very geometry. If you uh, have a pipe, you run, uh, put a spherical uh, piece of glass in the end of it and shine light through the pipe, it's going to refract at exactly 76.345 degrees. Uh, megaphones are using a different set of, uh, you know, uh, vibrations, frequencies, but they concentrate uh, this uh, in the form of the megaphone. So, you know, the, the megaphone that you see the college cheerleaders uh, using uh, has this exact same geometry. So we see that harmonics wave, waves use this both to scale and to, uh, to concentrate um, uh, vibrational frequencies. Our DNA has this as well. So another vitally important thing that we talk about in the book. Now for some of these uh, examples in, in architecture, I have many, many examples 
of uh, Sardinian Naragis. Uh, this is just one of many that are in the book. Uh, these Naragis are found on the island of Sardinia in um, the Mediterranean Ocean. Interestingly enough, there are over, uh, approximately 20,000 of these are estimated to have been uh, built on the island. Uh, this island also has the highest longevity uh, life expectancy on the planet, and I don't think that's an accident. Uh, here is an example of uh, Scottish Brock. There are many, many examples, very similar architecture, as you can see. Uh, many examples of this in the book. Here's the Great Zimbabwe Ruin that uh, I mentioned uh, is on the cover of the book. An interesting fact about this uh, particular ruin, Michael Tellinger and um, uh, Dr. Sam uh, measured the energy field of this uh, ruin and found that it created the highest level of ionization that they had ever been able to measure on, a, on, a, on a, a ruin of this nature. And I'm not surprised at all, given the geometry and the, uh, the research that I've done that will show you how powerful this geometry is and vital to the creative process. Here's an ancient fort. Uh, there are many forts that have this uh, geometry as well. And starts to make me question whether these were actually forts or whether they were energetic devices, given uh, what we now know about the geometry of these forts. Uh, another area where we find this is in uh, Hindu temples. There's two types of uh, Hindu uh, uh, architecture. There's the Nagara or Northern uh, Indian style. And this is an example of that. And here's an example of the Southern or Dravidian style of Hindu temple, both of which incorporate 76, 345 into their geometry. Uh, moving on to some Buddhist examples. Here's a Buddhist temple, the Five Pagoda Temple uh, in China, which has this. Uh, here's a pagoda that has it as well. Many, many more examples of this uh, in the book. Uh, here's a synagogue uh, that, contains this geometry. Uh, here's a mosque that contains this geometry. And Gothic cathedrals, this, this is an, a very important area, I think, for those of us living in the West, because uh, as it turns out, uh, 76, 345 is the predominant angle used in the steeples of Gothic cathedrals. Uh, so there are numerous examples in the book uh, of this uh, geometry in Gothic cathedrals. Another type of church that has this is called the Norwegian Stav Church. And uh, there aren't very many of these left, but uh, there are uh, several wonderful examples of uh, the use of 76 345 in their construction. I uh, hear some Neo Gothic cathedrals. I'm just giving you two of many, many examples inside the book. Uh, that maintain this geometry as well. Here's a more contemporary cathedral uh, that was built in Brazil. Uh, the architect admits that he used the Sputnik uh, Russian air, uh, spacecraft as the model. And of course, we'll see that in a few minutes has this geometry as well. But uh, one of the things that we talk about in the book is that 76, 345 has essentially been lost in Western Christian architecture. Other religious traditions have maintained it, and we get into questioning why that may be. Uh, the Salt Lake Temple and Salt Lake City uh, spires have this geometry as well. There are numerous examples of castles throughout the world that have this geometry, and we believe that this was primarily uh, for energy uh, purposes, the creation of free energy. We get into that. That's an entire uh, topic in the book as well, where we talk about this specific geometry and its role in creating free energy. Uh, here's another example of a castle in Germany. Uh, clock and bell towers, we saw that before with the megaphone. We now see this in real life examples. Uh, this is the Belfry of Ghent, a, a clock and bell tower. And here's the world famous San Marco bell tower in, Fent, in Venice. There are many, many examples showing that this geometry is incorporated because of its ability to amplify uh, sound. Uh, mystery school architecture, such as Rosalind Chapel, we have a, have a large section of the book 
a whole section devoted to Roslyn Chapel and the sacred geometry, not just of 76, 345, but sacred geometry shows up in any number of additional ways inside Roslyn Chapel. Uh, the ancient obelisks in Egypt uh, all have this geometry uh, at the peak of the obelisks as well. We talk about that. There are uh, lots of college and university government buildings. Here's an iconic building Memorial Hall at uh, Harvard University uh, has this geometry as well. Uh, here's an ancient, or excuse me, an older um, uh, municipal building, the uh, uh, City Hall in Richmond, Virginia has this, uh, as does a new contemporary City Hall in Ottawa, Canada. Just giving you a smattering of, of, of samples here. Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. has this geometry as well. Now we're moving into Tartarian architecture. Um, uh, Tartaria was largely uh, based in Eurasia in the areas of current day uh, Russia, but also at its peak included uh, India, China, the Middle East, uh, Eastern Europe, North America, Central America, and probably was worldwide, but we just don't have maps showing it as a worldwide culture. But many of the uh, uh, towers around the Kremlin have this uh, geometry built in. Uh, St. Basil's Cathedral uh, in Moscow has this. This is a classic uh, Tartarian architecture. Um, other uh, uh, buildings throughout uh, Russia, uh, the Alexandrov Kremlin. Uh, here's, a, here's a Russian Orthodox Church in Havana, Cuba, a contemporary structure. And uh, here's uh, another cathedral in Ukraine. Many, many examples of those. Uh, in more contemporary or neo-Gothic architecture, uh, uh, here's a classic hotel uh, in Ottawa, Canada that has it. Uh, the Chrysler Building in New York City uh, has this, as do several others. Uh, every single Disney uh, park has a castle with this geometry. Um, here's a contemporary uh, uh, museum that's been built in uh, Kazan in Russia uh, that demonstrates the history of the use of these conical structures with this 36, 345 geometry. Here's a contemporary hotel in Las Vegas with it, the Excalibur. Uh, here are some examples of spacecraft. This is the Sputnik uh, uh, spacecraft developed uh, in Russia. Uh, here's our own space shuttle uh, that was used for many years for uh, going up to the International Space Station. Uh, MiG fighters, there are plenty of American MiG fighters, missiles, aircraft, uh, all many more examples in the book. Uh, hieroglyphs are, uh, there's a specific Egyptian hieroglyph that looks like the pyramid, has this ex exact geometry, and it actually uh, is, has been translated to mean the word give. Uh, here's examples of that uh, hieroglyph at the Temple of Karnak in Egypt. Uh, the Mayan calendar has this uh, exact uh, pyramidal shape, exact same geometry examples that this that there was a worldwide culture that knew about this. Here's a particularly interesting one in the free energy sector, Wardenclyffe Tower. Uh, it was known as uh, believed by researchers to be based primarily on resonance. And it has, the tower has the 76345 architecture. Uh, there was pre-Edison uh, illumination. Uh, here's a picture drawing from 1799 of uh, an obelisk and two pyramids. And we see that they seem to be the source of lighting. This was on the Champs-Élysées in Paris. Uh, 76, 345 and the pyramidal shaped objects. Uh, here's some examples of power plants uh, that we uh, currently uh, use as churches, which probably had prior uses as uh, energy power plants. And we go into that in great detail. Uh, hats, witch hats, nuts caps, they all have this geometry. And there's, uh, I go into detail as to how uh, the, uh, uh, the dunce cap uh, became an object of derision and ridicule, uh, but it was always based upon the, um, 
uh, the witch hats of the time. Interestingly enough, I found this that the Tower of Babel, when you start to look at the various artists who have painted the Tower of Babel, they all seem to end up using the 76 345 geometry, which uh, we, you know, I go into some speculation as to why that may be the case in the book. Um, here's some examples of uh, contemporary technology of this geometry in use. Uh, power plant cooling towers use this geometry to maximize the uh, flow of air through the system and thereby uh, maximize the cooling of this. Uh, uh, process for cooling water in a, in a power plant. Here's another example that we found too, iron furnaces, which are, uh, these were uh, in, in rural mountainous areas, a lot of them in Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Ohio, down to Georgia, uh, and into New England. But uh, these furnaces use this geometry in their furnaces. Uh, looks like that it was optimal for um, uh, maximizing the, uh, the temperatures that could be achieved inside the, uh, the furnace to uh, produce iron. So that's some of the examples. And that's the first part of the book. The, the next part of the book, I really get into the questions of if this has been around for thousands of years in all these cultures, every continent, why is it that we don't know about it? And I get into this discussion in some detail, and I go on to show that the history of sacred geometry, the golden ratio, uh, our system of mathematics, Fibonacci sequence, fractals, the ether, platonic solids, free energy, Tartarian empire, all of this uh, information, the history of these has been rewritten and covered up by numerous powerful forces, including government, science, politics, and religion. So um, uh, this is a, it's a, a topic that I think is as important, at, if not more so, than the discovery of this geometry and this information in the first place. Because you cannot leave, uh, go through the book, see all these examples, and not have this question. Uh, why don't we know about this? Why isn't it taught in our school? So we do that. And, you know, it, it, it seems as though when you look at all of this information as a whole, uh, it becomes apparent that there is an attempt to rewrite our worldview, our history in such a way that, that we believe in a world of, of, of randomness, that we are accidents, when in fact, uh, when you see that geometry, mathematics, harmonics all work together in this wonderful symphony to create uh, our physical experience, you come away knowing that our world it truly is based on divine order. And finally, I bring up some of the, si the science uh, behind 76345. Uh, in addition, to uh, having all, the summary of all of the Russian pyramid research that was done both in Russia and by the Pyramid Science Foundation. Oh, uh, I've got two pieces of, of my own unique research, which are very powerful. One of them uh, is that I found an ancient two-dimensional diagram, which when I plotted it in three dimensions, demonstrates that the ancients knew that the Platonic solids, their progression in the creator process occurred within the 76 345 geometry. And then also original research that I've done, I uh, demonstrate why from a harmonic standpoint that 76 345 produces the optimal wave coherence in, the, in creation. So there's some powerful science in this book as well uh, that Again, for those of, of you who are interested in this, we'll leave you, uh, you know, amazed as to how we could have lost this information for so long. So I'm hoping that uh, you'll find this book to be as interesting as it was for me to write it. Uh, it's got me, uh, I had to cut it off at some point. There's still questions that I have. I'm going to continue researching uh, on the sacred geometry and the harmonic side of this because uh, there's lots more fascinating uh, things to, uh, to bring out in future books. But 
I appreciate your listening. And uh, I truly believe that uh, if you take some time and read this book, it's going to be transformational for you because uh, it certainly has been for me. It's an, a great awakening process to find out how it is that we could have lost all of this knowledge. I thank you for watching and you have a great day.